Hey guys, this is Ryan with Mom on Mission, and today is the next segment of my How We Use series, and this is how we use um, Apologia Science. Um, in this one specifically, we're going to talk about the physics and chemistry book from Apologia Science, and um, this is just kind of how we break it up and how we go about um, the experiments and all the things like that. Um, this is a curriculum that can be kind of intimidating because they have a lot to offer um, but really that just for me gives us more opportunities and gives us more freedom on how we use it because obviously you don't have to use it exactly how they say and you don't have to do every single thing that they give you um, to do so what i typically do is i get out the notebooking journal which i'll insert pictures here um, and that has in the very beginning um, kind of a breakdown of how you can do your lessons. It's by no means how you have to do them, um, but I have found it very helpful. Um, it is, um, if you use it exactly how it's written, you do science twice a week. And um, we used to break it up even further and we would do it four days a week, um, but break those segments in half. So what they would say to do on day one, we would take two days to do, and then day two, we would take another two days to do over the course of a week. Um, this year we've done things a little differently and we do science um, one to two times a week and history one to two times a week. So it kind of averages out and we just use those blocks um, to kind of give us a guideline of what to do each time we do science, but it's definitely not um, hard and fast how we do it. So I, like I said, alternate our history and our science. So on a science day, um, I will look at what they have for the day. It will have um, chunks of reading for you to do. And what we do is we do that all the way through. We do that with their MP3 download. Um, I think you can also get the CDs, but we just chose the MP3 download. It was a little cheaper and we got it a lot faster. Um, and so typically we'll listen to this while the boys are eating lunch. Um, if it happens to fall where they're not eating, then I will typically give them something to do with their hands. I will ask them to draw what they hear um, being talked about. I will ask them to do a coloring sheet. Um, in the notebooking journal, there are coloring sheets throughout. Um, and so they're busy with either eating or doing something with their hands, but they are supposed to be quiet and listening. And I will pause at the try this sections. They are scattered throughout the lessons. Um, and those are mostly done at our co-op. Our co-op does not get to every single try this because like I said, there's a lot there. Um, if we come across one, our co-op is pretty good about sending out what ones they, were, they will do throughout the year, what experiments and demonstrations they plan to do. Um, so if we come across one that I know they're not going to be doing, we will try to do it. If it's a pretty involved one that takes a lot of, um, materials and planning, I typically just skip it. We will talk about um, what we would have done if we were doing the demonstration or experiment, um, but we won't actually do it. But typically those harder ones are the ones that my co-op does do. Um, and then we have, there's some that are super easy that just take um, a few kitchen items that you already have. And we might do those, even if our co-op is already planning to do them, um, we might go ahead and do them at home and then they just repeat them at co-op. Um, and we try to space it to where we learn the lesson that they'll be talking about at co-op around the same week so that they don't, there's not a big gap of time in between. Um, and I make sure that they have at least listened to the MP3 before they go to co-op so they're familiar at least with the terminology and stuff that they'll be hearing um, when they do those experiments. Um, and then we go through, so we stop at the try this activities and sometimes we try that, sometimes we just talk about it. Sometimes I just say, you'll do it at co-op, just wait and we'll talk about it after you do it at co-op. Um, but then there's also parts where they ask you to review or tell what you've learned um, to another person. And so we will take that time to pause. I will ask the boys to recap. Sometimes I'll kind of direct them with more pointed questions. Sometimes I'll just say, hey, what have you learned so far? Um, and those are pretty spaced regularly throughout the entire lesson, which I really like because then you're not just overwhelmed with a bunch of information and forget it all. You're actually like made to um, kind of narrate it back um, to keep it in your memory better. Um, and then 
in the notebooking um, journal, you will have different activities. Typically on like the first, sometimes the second day of the lesson, they will have coloring sheets. Like I said, sometimes they do those, sometimes they don't, depending on if they're eating or not or what's going on for that day. Or sometimes we'll do them on a day um, that they're not scheduled, but it's just coloring, so it's fine. Um, and then they also have in there um, worksheets and booklets that you can put together. Um, typically we look at what's on the docket for the day and if there is um, you know something on there that I really want them to do after we've um, listened to the mp3 and done any experiments we're going to do um, and done the review questions and then we will go ahead and do the worksheet or the copy work or the booklet whichever thing whichever um, project I think that they should do for the day um, sometimes they don't do anything sometimes there's not anything scheduled and sometimes it's just we don't want to or we have other things going on so we just need to um, bypass that um, we always do at the end of the chapter there are some review questions I'll show those here and we always do that I think it's a really good um, way to recap the entire chapter and it also shows you know, how much actually stuck with them and how well they are um, comprehending the ideas that they were taught. And then um, typically the last day of the lesson is when they put a lot of heavy emphasis on those worksheets and the booklets and everything, or mini books, I think is what they call them. Um, and so we for sure on that last day do at least one of the projects, um, but definitely not all of them. There's just a lot there. So typically then throughout the week, we will check out library books on the subject that we're learning. Um, and these I don't even necessarily sit down and read out loud to them. Um, a lot of times I'll just kind of skim them over and then just hand them over to them to explore. Um, sometimes they'll read them cover to cover. Sometimes they'll just check out the pictures and read the captions. Um, however they want to use them is fine. I just um, like to have that reinforcement there um, where they're seeing and um, reading the same concepts over and over. Um, and we will also, um, we typically always look for a Magic School Bus episode um, that pertains to what we're learning. There's not always one, but a lot of times we'll find, um, between the old Magic School Bus and the reboot, um, we'll find something that kind of correlates to what they're learning. Um, a couple times we've checked out the old Bill Nye videos um, from when I was in school, and um, those are pretty cool. I know some of his newer stuff's kind of weird, but, um, I like some of his older stuff. Um, sometimes we'll just look up a YouTube video. Um, there's, as you know, countless things on YouTube that you can find um, as far as educational material goes. Um, and then we also have a few um, Us Born encyclopedias that we will kind of look up and just skim through just to, again, just go over those same concepts that we've been learning um, over the past couple weeks. And then typically once they've gone to co-op and actually done um, the demonstrations and experiments of um, or for that lesson then either on our way home or over dinner that night we will kind of recap um, how that experiment went or the demonstration went and um, how it turned out and why the thing did what it did um, or why you know depending on what they're learning why the hot air um, rose and the cold air sunk or whatever it was um, so then we're just, again, reintroducing those ideas, those concepts, and cementing them in their brain a little bit better. So overall, science is very easy for us. Um, we always make sure that we get done listening to the MP3, the review questions, and the experiments that they do at co-op. Beyond that, sometimes we just get those three things done and call it good. Um, sometimes we get those three things done, um, plus some experiments at home, plus the coloring pages, plus the copy work, plus the worksheets, plus the mini books. Sometimes we do it all. Um, it's very fluid and it just depends on how our week's going and how much review I think they need on the topic. Um, so there's no um, set in stone way that we go about it. We just take those general um, lesson plans that they give in the beginning of the notebooking journal, loosely follow those, make sure we're done with a lesson by the time they're gonna learn it at co-op and um, go from there. So if you use Apologia, um, and it doesn't have to be the physics and chemistry, it can be anyone, because um, we kind of use them all the same so far. 
Um, let me know how you use them down below and how you're liking that curriculum. Um, and I will talk to you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.